we now like to tie a few concepts together. You've learned about the one sample case and the two sample case. It turns out that in a dependent t-test, the data can be transformed to turn it into a one sample case. We still would have the null hypothesis the same. In this case, is there a difference between the number of steps taken at one week and the number of steps taken at week 12? If the null hypothesis is true, then the difference between those two means would be zero. If the alternative hypothesis is true, we would find a difference between the two means. So in this case, the mean difference would not be zero. So we could take this dependent or correlated t-test and turn it into a one sample test by determining what the mean difference is between week one and week 12 and testing whether that mean difference is significantly different from zero. We'll do that with the data set that we used in the previous video. So, for example, at week one, 200 people, a mean of about 44,000 steps. At week 12, the same 200 people, a mean of about 49,000 steps. Are they significantly different from one another? Or is the difference between them significantly different from zero? Is the mean different zero? Well, we can see that, in fact, the mean difference is not zero. It's about 4,900 steps. But, in fact, is that 4,900 significantly, substantially different than zero, or is it an observation that could have occurred simply by chance? When we look at our results, we have a t-test. t is equal to 3.2. Think about where that 3.2 is on the t-distribution. Degrees of freedom are 199. The probability of obtaining the value 4932 differences in steps between week 1 and week 12 is less than 2 times in a thousand. If the null hypothesis is true. So we would reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a difference between week 1 steps and week 12 steps. Now let's run an SPSS program to show you how we would do that using the same data that we used in the previous video. Here are our SPSS results. On the top, we see the mean difference, 4,932 steps. Then we have the T value, 3.218, degrees of freedom, 199, two-tailed significance or probability, P less than 0.002. So here we've taken this dependent t-test and illustrated how it could be analyzed as if it was a one-sample t-test and made the same conclusions about whether or not there was a difference between week 1 and week 12. We'll now turn to SPSS and illustrate how you would actually do this with SPSS. Here's our data set again. It's the same data set that we used in the previous video. We have 200 subjects and the number of steps taken in week 1 and the number of steps taken in week 12. We're now going to analyze these data as if they were a one sample study. So we have to first create a variable because we're interested in knowing whether or not the difference between these two different measures at week 1 and week 12, we want to know whether that difference is actually zero. So let's create a variable. We'll go to transform, computer variable. Our target variable or created variable, we'll call it difference. And difference will be equal to week 12 minus week 1. The idea being is if there's no difference between week 12 and week 1, the average of that will be zero. So we'll say OK. When we return to the data set, you'll notice we have a new variable. We have week 1, week 12, and the difference. So now let's analyze that difference, which we know is 4,932 steps. Let's see if that difference is significantly different from zero. Analyze, compare means. Remember now, we're going to use a one-sample t-test. So we're going to analyze the difference as the test variable. And we want to test whether the, the average value for difference is different than our test value. Our test value would be zero. Is the difference that we've obtained significantly different than zero? Click OK. And here are our results. Just like you've seen in the previous slide, 
Here's the one sample test results that show the mean difference of about 4,932 steps. And are they significantly different from one another? Yes, they are. And in fact, if we look at the 95% confidence interval, if in fact there is no difference between the average difference score, N0, the 95% confidence interval would capture zero, and you'll notice that it does not. So we conclude, just as we've done in the dependent t-test, that there's a significant difference between week one and week 12 steps per week.